Yo, what's going on guys? It's JNTY, also known as John T here, and welcome to a new video on my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about... Oh, hang on, I forgot, I have to do something. I accidentally gave a subscriber the bowl yesterday. So welcome back to this video on my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Call of Duty 2020. Why are these maps so bad? So yeah guys, in today's video we are going to be talking about Call of Duty 2020. Is it still going to happen? What's going to happen? What's it going to be? Who knows? Who knows? So the leaks are saying the Call of Duty 2020 is going to be Vietnam. Now, would I like a Call of Duty Vietnam game? Of course I wouldn't. I've just been clattered into a room of two people. Of course I'd like a Call of Duty in Vietnam. Black Ops 1 was in Vietnam from what I remember. Well done, Jonty. You've done research. Uh, I believe it was in Vietnam. If not, I'm going to look like a bit of a fool. Now, obviously, I really like Black Ops 1. Black Ops 1 is one of my favourite cards. If you kill me, I'm not going to be happy. What is this? What? Black Ops 1 is one of my favourite cards of all time. And the campaign was unreal. And why am I why am I getting destroyed? It was a campaign which was very heavily story-based. And I really like that. What? Now, here's the problem with this. Is with the whole, you know, current... With the whole current pandemic going on around the world, that, you know, we're all dying because of a horrible virus, there is a chance that you just got... There is a chance Call of Duty 2020 might not even come out, because, obviously, people aren't working because of the virus, so they may actually delay it, or even worse, just not release it at all. Oh, we're getting a little bit of kills now. Hang on, let me just concentrate. Let me watch this for a grenade throw. Suck your mum, bruv. Kobe! <laughs> now, if it's not Vietnam, what's the other chances of Call of Duty being a Black Ops game? I'd say it's quite low. I don't think they'd come out with a Black Ops 5, to be honest. I think Black Ops 4 was their ending point, but they were forced into making that game. They wanted to end the series off by Black Ops 3. There's someone coming through this here. You ready? I'm going to do my slide and jump tactic. You ready? Haha. Uh -huh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Watch this. Bouncer. Kobe! Oh my god. That grenade worked as well. Yeah, from personal opinion though, I, I personally believe that Treyarch wanted to finish Call of Duty Black Ops series at Black Ops 3. And because of the money it made, they were forced into Black Ops 4. When you think about Modern Warfare as well, like, this does not feel like a Modern Warfare game. If you were to put this next to Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 1, the original, and Modern Warfare 3, you wouldn't be able to tell that this is the same, like, series. I think they've very much used the name as a way to sell. Which, of course you would. Of course you would. If, if you know the game's popular, you're going to use the name to sell. That's called good marketing. That's all that is. Am I behind them all? I think I am. Oh, there's two. Now, obviously... Now, am I excited for a game like Vietnam from, from Treyarch? Of course I am. Of course I am. I easily, Treyarch are, are my favourite development team. I'll be honest, I've not enjoyed another COD since, like, to the point that I'd play it nearly every day. World War II was probably the only one by a different developer that I, I could play every day because I kind of enjoyed it. And the only reason I enjoyed World War II is because of the shipment playlist. If shipment was never added, I would never play that game over and over again because those maps were absolutely gash as well. Now, do I think it's good that Treyarch are moving away from the Black Ops series? Again, yeah. If they're trying to rebrand themselves, and I'm going to guess Call of Duty is going to try and rebrand itself because don't forget, we've had the dark ages of Call of Duty. I think they are very much trying to rebrand themselves as a, as a decently made company, which, you know what, fair play to them. Fair play to them. Sorry, that's to concentrate to see the way that guy was. Now, obviously, this video is mainly about Vietnam. Uh, well, not Vietnam as in the country, but Call of Duty Vietnam or the rumoured Call of Duty 2020. But I thought, I'm getting clocked. So we're into the second game of the video. That's right, two games in one video. You guys are privileged. So obviously, this video is mainly about Vietnam or Call of Duty Vietnam or Call of Duty 2020 or whatever Call of Duty 2020 is going to be. No, infinite bunny warfare space in a carousel. However, what I thought would be quite funny 
is if I told you a story that happened to myself about four years ago. And it involves me, high school, and a skateboard. So I'll set the day for you. I'm obviously I'm a plucky little teenager at the age of... I've just called myself plucky. What do you mean? So I had a mate called... Again, won't say his full name or real name for confidentiality purposes. But I'll just let you know. He was he was known as the Asian Bruce Springsteen. I can't get to kill. And he brought a skateboard into the classroom. I was like, oh, can I have a go? He was like, no. But I was like, I'm going to have a go anyway. And he's like, oh, okay. So... I'm on the skateboard, right? Never rode a skateboard in my life, ever. And I'm like, oh, this is easy. I stay on it for five seconds. Next minute, go arse over tits. I literally fly in, in the... I don't fly. I, I do do a bit of a, a madness, to put it simply, and flip on the floor and land knee first. Yeah, I, f I fall off the skateboard and land knee first onto the hard floor and instantly just start crying. And I was like, wait a minute. Is he actually in pain? Because, uh, obviously, when you're a kid, you, you used to, like, pretend like you'd broken your finger when you hadn't broke your finger. It's like, look, it's broken! And it's not even broken. So, they realise I'm in actual pain, yeah, and they're like, oh, no, you're fine, don't worry, just, you know, chill out, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Obviously, I'm not fine. I'm in a lot of pain. Long story short, I'm crying my eyes out and they have to call my mum up because they think something's seriously wrong. I know something's seriously wrong because I can feel it in my freaking kneecap. So, we get rushed to the hospital. Well, I rushed to the hospital. I go to the hospital with my mum. Even though I didn't really want to because, you know, hospitals are the devil. So, I do a few x-rays. And they're like, you haven't broke it. Definitely haven't broke it. It's literally just a sprain. Or it was a uh, stretched ligament, sorry. Stretched ligament. Oh, yeah, okay, that's not too bad. What what I didn't know is it was broken. So, they're like, because you're still a child, your bones haven't fused properly. So, we're going to have a baby doctor look at it. Like, oh, cheers, that's demoralizing. So they had a baby doctor, like a bone, bone practitioner, look at the uh, bones in my kneecap in case it was just like a line because your kneecaps aren't fully fused when you're a child. So they scan my kneecap and they're like, yeah, no, nothing wrong with it. So the next day, I'm sitting on the toilet having a poo, as you do. And my mum shouts me and she's like, John T, you need to go to the hospital. And I'm like, why? I'm like, You've broke your kneecap. I was like, I knew it. I knew I did. Because I, I knew it was broken. I could feel the break. So we go to the hospital and... They're like, have you been walking on it? I was like, no, I don't think so. Now, if we recap to the day earlier where my dad's like, it's not broken. It's if it's just if it's just a ligament stretch, you've, you've got to you know walk on it. The doctors are now saying to me, make sure you haven't walked on it because you, you've 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 clotted your kneecap in half. What is this game? I get this lovely cast put on and I'm sent home, and then obviously this is the first thing I've ever broken, except for my nose, and. I'm chilling in my auntie's house, just, like, messing about. And she says to me, like, Oh, that looks pretty painful, John, to yeah. So I, I turn around and go, yeah. And then try to do a dance. And fall straight onto the kneecap, right where the crack is. So, yeah, that's the story of how I broke my kneecap in, in, in half, pretty much. It's a pretty bad story, to be fair. It is pretty mad. Um, nope, 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 nope. Done, done. Bye, guys.